Uh, all right, so for the recordings, I'm Brandon Beatty, um, local Linux guy, president of, still not going. Are you recording? Oh, we're good, go ahead. All right, um, so I, I, for probably about six or seven years, have done Myth TV and all sorts of other uh, Linux multimedia. I really got into videos. Um, I'm kind of a video file, audio file guy. Um, if it's under Linux and it's video or audio, I probably tried it. Um, I did the original HD drivers for Linux, um, so you get HD TV under Linux, uh, the support for Myth. And uh, right now I work for a company. We build uh, Linux based media servers for uh, video file, audio file, high end theaters uh, that do all the net <coughs> network movies, music, all sorts of things, tie into <coughs> automation systems. Excuse me, my, my voice is getting a little cracky. Um, so the t today's presentation is on Linux me multimedia. Uh, we'll go over mainly um, Myth TV, the setup, all the different things you can do in it, uh, how to tweak your X drivers so you'll actually get the, the de desired resolutions, the um, you know syncing to your display device, which becomes a huge um, problem, as I'll show you with Blu-ray that we'll go into later and um, all the ins and outs of getting HDMI working under Linux or DVI or component. So to start off, um, this is basically a uh, Scratch Ubuntu. I did an app get install Myth TV and all the uh, plugins associated with it. I also installed the, the stock, or not the stock, but the um, non-free, non-open NVIDIA drivers. So those you have to actually, they're not part of NVIDIA, when in, or, uh, not part of Ubuntu. When Ubuntu first boots up, you've got an NVIDIA card. It'll actually install just a generic NVIDIA driver, which does not have all the acceleration and all the different extensions that you'll want if you're going to be doing um, any Blu-ray playback. So um, with Myth Setup, the first thing you do is you run Myth TV Setup. If I can do that. So. It'll say, hey, you're currently running it because it's installed. You have to shut down the back end of Myth in order to run the application. My system doesn't have good wireless range on the um, keyboard. So I have to scoot. So under general, basically you specify the IP address. If you plan on moving the system around, it actually defaults to your dynamic IP address if you happen to have one the first time. Um, if you get a di different dynamic IP address, it'll Myth won't run. So you want to make sure that that's either set to 127.001 localhost, or if your system or set it to a static IP. Uh, all the other information on this you can leave alone, except again under the master backend. You want to make sure that that's always going to be a reachable address for you. Um, you first select your NTSC format. In the past, those of you probably, if you remember. Uh, ATSC used to be an option. They've bypassed that because the ATSC is all handled through the DVB drivers under Myth now. Um, you can select your cable frequency, uh, US cable, or you can do just standard broadcast if you're just receiving over the air. In Utah, we're really fortunate. We have one of the largest HD markets for number of channels that are available for free over the air, um, which I really enjoy. For me personally, I get far more programming over the air that I can watch um, than, so it's, it's not even worth it for me to sign up for cable because there's plenty of TV without it. So I'll go ahead and set that back to cable though for um, today. Um, the information in here, the HD ring buffer side is so specifically if you're doing HD TV, um, usually 9400, 9600 is about right. If you start to get stuttering in some of your videos, that's a setting that you'll definitely want to uh, check. If you get underruns on your buffer, you can check your Varlog messages and when it's recording, it'll say, hey, I'm running out of buffer space. That's the value that you need to up. Um, you'll, if you have low uh, memory on the system, if it's a little bit slower system, that's definitely something that you'll run into a problem with. Um, EIT transports, I recommend just not worrying about this. EIT is also specifically for HDTV. What it is is um, each channel can put out its program guide for the day, so you can know what programs are coming up, and it'll actually display it on you know your regular television. 
without having to subscribe to some service or have a, a cable box that does all the, uh, the tuning for you. The problem with EIT is it's really unreliable. Um, a lot of channels will have you know, start and stop times incorrect, um, which ends up being a, a huge problem if you're using those things to detect your television. I'll get into um, actually handling schedules. There's, there's a service you can sign up for, and I'll talk about that later. Um, you can set up your system up where if you know you're not going to be recording anything during the night, you can have it shut down. You can use the system BIOS to actually power the system back up. When it knows it's going to have a recording, it saves a little bit of power. Um, it's something that you're more likely to do if you have multiple myth boxes and you have one main back end. You can shut your clients down, but you probably don't want to ever shut your back end server down. Um, it, it doesn't work as nicely as it should. Um, it, you, your motherboard would have to support Wake on LAN and all sorts of other features. Thank you. And um, you may miss the, the first couple minutes of a, a television show if you do the Wake on LANs for your server. So <clears throat> you can set up the maximum um, jobs that you can run on the back end. A job is something like commercial detecting, transcoding for your iPod, so it'll, uh, your audio and video will work directly on your iPod or doing any one of um, several other user-defined tasks. Uh, usually you want to keep it at one, um, sometimes two if you've got a dual core. I always leave it on one, even if it's dual core, just so that I'm not always pegging the processor and overloading it. Um, you can set the start and stop times. You know, If you're using your system for something else during the day, maybe you want to only run certain jobs at night, you can definitely do that. Uh, the, these you can just skip. It's just the commands that it uses for um, the backend jobs. Just skip this one. It's nothing that really anyone will deal with. If you have capture cards, which if you're using Myth TV, you most likely will. Uh, there's a quick little guy that helps you set up your system. Um, you know, it supports your analog video for Linux cards. Those are your hopage, um, uh, the ones that do not encode hardware encode the video stream. Uh, you also have your um, the old Matrix uh, 200 cards. The MPEG-2 uh, encoder cards will be your PVR 150, 250s, the ones that actually can encode an NTSC audio, sig audio video um, in the card and just dump the, uh, the compressed stream already to disk. The benefit of those cards is it actually offsets the CPU. So you can put one of these um, run a myth box on a like a via embedded system, have the um, capture card do all of the encoding. That way your playback on a little via box will always look smooth. Um, the video device, you know, it's usually just dev, video zero, video one, two, or three, depending on what you want to use. Um, DVB, if you have, you know, a PCHD TV card, air to PC card, uh, you'll notice this one. Um, this is also if you're in Europe, if there's anybody going to watch this or fly to Europe and set up a system. Uh, the DVB in U, uh, the U.S., uh, what, what has basically happened is we've taken all the ATSC stuff out of myth and created a wrapper. DVB is much better standard than ATSC is and ever will be. So there's uh, basically a wrapper for anything ATSC to be treated as a DVB device under Linux. So that's why... Um, your only option now is your DVB. In this is where it says, you know, warning already in use, I've already got it up a DVB. Otherwise, that tells you the card information, what your make, your model, um, everything else you can leave alone. There are some recording options if you want to go and set. Um, under ATSC, you can actually or transmit a broadcaster, say KBYU, has four different um, television channels that they broadcast. So this will let you, you know, set. I want to record it up to two. Uh, you can definitely come up and say, you know, max recording of four or five or whatever. Um, five is actually the, the max that you can go up to. So just something to know if you want to be able to use one tuner to record four channels as long as they're on the same major channel number for HD. Uh, there, I'll show you here real quick. There's a lot of hidden commands like you don't see an option. Well, you do see an option for delete, but how do you delete just one card? If you come over it and hit D, you can actually delete your one card. 
M, D, R, E, and I are the, the five main hidden characters that will affect, or that you can use on just about any menu that have hidden um, agendas. So under here, um, so you can create a video source. And what that is, is zap to it um, used to be the popular one. They were a free service uh, about two years ago that everybody used uh, for downloading their, their program guide information. Unfortunately, um, that one, the, the owners of it, Tribune Media, shut down the free service. Another company came, or was actually started by uh, one of the guys that worked on that, and buys all the data from Tribune, and has started a company called St Schedules Direct, schedulesdirect.com. You can go there, sign up, you get free seven days if you just want to try the service out. And it was originally $20 for every three months. They got so many people signed up, uh, went to $20 for um, six months, and it went to $15 for nine months. And I think now it's $20 for a year of program guide, uh, which is not that bad. Unfortunately, it's no longer free, but um, I use it. I, I, recommend, I recommend it to people. It's a lot. It, it takes all the simplification out. You get, I can't remember if it's 10 or 14 days of program guides, and they cover every um, possible station in the U.S. Um, also mention real quick, if you have any questions, just raise your hand. If I don't see it, say, hey, um, I'll, I'll catch you. But it's 14 days. Is it 14? Okay, thank you. Uh, so you can basically give yourself a name, so see like my program guide. Uh, you can select, you know, schedules direct. There are other ones out there. Your EIT that I was talking about earlier. You can say no grabber. Uh, they also have ones if you're outside the U.S. With schedules direct, you'll get a username, Bob, and your password, and you'll say retrieve listing. Down here will come um, your listings that you set up on their website. So you can actually set up more than one different program guide if you have different needs. Like maybe you have one. Mythbox, a client that um, has an over-the-air tuner in it, and you have a different client that has an HD tuner, and you have another one that's on a cable. You can set up all the different program guides individually. And then um, in here, whoop, not that one, um, you will set, you know, a display name, you select your source like HDTV, um, you say live video only. And the most important thing, if you're doing HDTV, you have to come in here and say, um, scan for channels, absolutely critical. Uh, you have to do this first before you download the program guide information. Otherwise, there can be a few things that um, get kind of fouled up in your program guide. You may have extra channels or ones that are floating. So always scan for the channels first. Um, the options that I personally prefer, the only one I change, is going to be the minus for the um, it, you can change, you know, the standard is, it'll say 5.1 for channel 5, subchannel 1. If you want, I always, um, you, underscore used to be popular. A lot of remotes now have dash or a period. I prefer dash. And then you'll just say next, and it goes through and scans all the channels and inserts everything for you. If you have a regular NTSC tuner card, you just flat out skip this. Um, the other thing is you'll need to set your, your starting channel. Um, 7.2 is actually a really strong station for Utah, so I prefer that one to start. Uh, channel editor lets you, you know, go through. Here's a list of all the channels, all the HD channels in Utah. Um, if you want, you can come in and say edit one, which gives you all the information. If you want to do fine-tuned uh, settings, if you have a regular NTSC card, you can set, you know, the color, the saturation per channel which is really useful for you know, weak, or weak channels or the ones that um, you just, they're darker, they're brighter, the reds are off. It's all per station. You can also set whether or not um, the channel is, you do commercial flagging. If you have a PBS station, just shut the, the um, commercial detection off on the, your PBS. There's no reason trying to go through and detect commercials on PBS because there really aren't any commercials. Um, And that's pretty much it. Uh, you can also go to, if I go down far enough, oh shoot, uh, the icon download. So this will go out to the internet, find all the different stations that you have, and pull down the station icons. 
uh, for the channels. And I'll show you what it looks like in a second. And that's it. Um, you can set up storage directories. This is new in the latest version of Myth. You can have more than one directory where you store television. Um, so if you have multiple hard drives, or you know you, you want some things to be under certain directories under uh, an NFS or some amount, you can do that. And you go ahead and exit. It says run the Mythfield database, and you're off. Um, usually, you end up setting about five to ten things. Um, I go through that in about 30 seconds, and I've got everything set up. Um, the first time, it'll probably take you about as long as I did. Next thing, starting Myth. Um, you, you don't start Myth TV. If you start Myth TV, it gives you a nice error. Um, actually, it's going to, um, it's actually a direct jump point to your television, but we don't want that. We want to start Myth Front End. So Myth Front End is the GUI interface that lets you access all the different portions of Myth and the plugins. Um, if you hit Watch TV, that takes you right into television. Um, the media library has all your different settings. And I'm going to just mention this really quickly. Um, and one of the first things that I like to show is you can completely customize this. I hate this look. I hate the organization of everything. Um, so the first thing I always do is I go into Utility Setup, Setup, Appearance, and I change the, uh, well, yeah, I, I always change the font. I personally like uh, Myth Center's not bad. Um, I didn't load it. Uh, there, there's a lot of different themes that you can go and pull. Glass wide looks pretty nice, so let's go with that one. Um, you can use a random theme on every load if you want. I don't know why you would do that. Um, you can change your paint engine. I recommend the OpenGL and the default um, theme style. I prefer they have you know your default, which is what you saw. Uh, you have classic and you have DVR. And the different forms, uh, DVR will have more of your DVR functions on the main screen with all of your music, movies, kind of in submenus. I prefer uh, classic because it, it gets kind of equal balance to everything. You'll have your DVR section on the main page. You'll have your music on the main page. So go to next. Um, if you want, if you don't want full screen, you can you know shove it over in a corner, but there's a better way. I always recommend people just leave this alone. Um, if you're going to have separate video modes for TV playback, Linux has something called XRandR. Is any, anybody familiar with it? Okay, so a few. XRandR is something that lets you kind of in real time change your resolution for specific video. So if you have like a um, DVD, it'll detect that it's 24 frames per second and attempt to change your video resolution uh, or your video Say, okay, so DVD is a 720 by 480 image. It'll change the resolution to 720 by 480, and it'll attempt to do a refresh at 24, so it, it syncs exactly to the video that's being produced. That can get rid of a lot of stutter problems. Um, it's a little bit more complicated to set up. You have to do it per device and make sure that all of the different video modes that you have, you kind of test and make sure they all work correctly with your display device. Um, the new televisions work extremely well. If you're doing anything over DVI or HDMI, you're pretty much set. Uh, VGA um, is fairly good, and anything over component, composite, and S-video, it won't work, unfortunately. Um, so if you want to change the language, all this stuff, you can leave alone. Uh, if you have a really small television, you may want to play around with the fonts. These fonts actually only affect certain things and can often make your, your text run outside of the box in the theme. So just be aware. Um, if you have an LCD, there's different scaling that it does based on that. So I select a different theme. You hit the enter, finish, I should say. And it reloads the theme. And not too slow. It's If, if you have an, um, 128 or 1920 by 1080, it may take about 30 to 40 seconds. So as I said, now you have your menu. Everything's up at the front. I personally prefer this. I have a question. Yes. Does Myth TV support closed captioning? Yes, it does. Um, supports so closed. Do you have to enable, or is that by default? Um, yep, I'll get into that in one second. So on a television, you know, you have Watch TV. If I go there, it won't work because we don't have television hookups in the basement here. Schedule recordings, you can go by the program guide, which is your standard program guide. You can customize how many 
you know, long, wide. So if you have a larger television, I prefer seven wide and um, seven tall, personally. Uh, you have your program finder, which lets you search by letters, which is really easy if you wanted to say find, oh, where's Chuck? I don't know if that's coming out yet. Anyway. Did I? Yep. So, and then the nice thing about this, when you go into record, it's not your typical DVR. There are more functions in this, uh, in Myth TV's PVR, um, than absolutely any other system out there. So you can say, select, record only the showing. Record, this, uh, show, record one showing of this title, which just records, um, you know, one showing. Which maybe, you know, later on, um, you can you can always mark shows as don't record, and so doing this will actually let you just kind of have it record one, but you can keep on marking not this one, not this one until you're ready for it. Um, you can do recording this time slot every week, every uh, showing this title every week, recording the time slot every day, uh, one sh record one show every day, and any time on any channel. Um, I usually leave it on any time in any channel. Then I come into schedule options. Um, actually, yeah, I go into to storage option. And there's something called no episode limit. So if you record um, like every news that came on every station, maybe you only want to keep the last 10. So you just say keep the last 10 shows. That keeps it, uh, your system from actually filling up everything with all your news, but you have the last 10 news shows that have come on, which can be really useful. Um, you can also say, don't record this if it'll exceed the max. So maybe you just want the next 10, or you just want to only keep 10 shows in. Um, if you go in and delete them, it'll just fill it back up to the next amount. Storage group. Uh, Myth has something called groups as far as organizing it when you go back to look at your recordings. You can have you know, dad shows, kid shows, mom shows. Um, going into this, I, I've only got one storage group set up right now, but you could actually select what um, group each one of the individual shows go into, and including multiple groups. Uh, How do you create the storage group? Um, I'll, show you, I'll get to that in just a little bit. Post recording is if um, you want to override any settings, like don't uh, commercial detect or commercial show, uh, automatically transcode all these shows say you like the Travel Channel and you wanted all of them to be automatically changed to an iPod format. This is where you do that. You come in and select um, one of your different settings. Um, I don't have an iPod in here, but one of them may say, you know, go to iPod. And I'll show you in a second how to select, set those up. Um, anything. There are, yep, yep. There, there's probably just about anything FFmpeg outputs. So, um, you know, schedule, a lot of these things you just pretty much skip. So you can go ahead and save these settings. Um, you notice that these turn color representing that they're set to record. Um, you can also search, you know, by your titles. You can put keywords. You can search for individual people. Um, advanced will let you do... Um, you know, I can search for a specific phrase like rally, racing. Um, you know, I can say, you know, only look in the sports for it. You know, any genre or look on particular stations. Um, I, I like these because I'll set up keywords like race, but I'll make sure that they're only under the sports. That way, if some news show happens to have the word race um, in their information, it doesn't record that. It stays specific to the keyword categories that I'm looking for. Uh, the new titles is really nice because if you're wondering, hey, what's on this new season, you don't have to start going through all the different lists. You can just come here and say, well, um, whoop, here are all the new shows that, that are coming up. You can also uh, look for all the premieres, all the movies, all the series and specials. I usually keep an eye on you know, what movies are coming up. There's usually some really good movies. Um, some of them may be on at 2 o'clock in the morning. but you just record it and watch it whenever you want. Uh, there's just a default jump of movies categories. Uh, you can also set up to record certain channels at certain, if you just want to keep recording one channel. Um, if you want to do things specifically by the time of day, or you can 
modify any of your, your stored searches. Custom record is just your typical VCR. Um, I'll just jump over that for time. Manual schedule, oh, actually manual schedule is like your VCR. Custom record, um, I'm trying to think. Oh, you can set up really complex um, searches. Your recording priorities, if you have you know, only one TV tuner, you may want to set up um, different priorities, like I want to record these shows over, um, uh, sorry, I'm going to, just so I, I always go over on time, so I've just got to keep a close eye. Um, anyway, you can set up, you know, record this channel over another. If you're doing HD TV, you'll find like Fox has two channels. You'll want to set the non-HD, like down to like negative 10. Um, that way you always record the HD over. Um, you can also set priorities like uh, your wife may want to set up Oprah to record over your um, lethal weapon. So. And upcoming recordings just is going to show you your shows that um, you, know, you have scheduled in case you want to just make sure you don't have any conflicts or something's changed. Uh, watch recordings, you know, you can come in here um, and say, you know, where's something good? I'll pick this. Do we not have audio? I can hear it faintly. Anybody know how to adjust the volume? Oh well, yeah, we'll, we'll skip it. You can kind of hear it. So, starts the recording. If you hit M, brings up the on-screen menus. Uh, you can either edit the recording if you want to set your own jump points or cut things out uh, just for storage later. You can um, jump to the program. If you have different programs, you can set jumps. Begin transcoding if you decide, hey, I like this, I, I want to put it on my iPod or watch it later. You can come in here and just select your iPod. Um, commercial detect, uh, in this case, I've, by default, it shows up where auto skip is turned off. Auto skip is not always 100%. Um, it's a lot better on HD than it is in TSC. But I usually just set it to auto skip notify. Um, what that does is, if I jump, There we are. So you're watching your show. It says three minutes and 27 seconds of commercial. So I just hit one, oh, I hit the right button, um, my 30 second jump, seven times, and I'm back into the show. I prefer that just in case it says 17 minutes. I know it's not 17 minutes, and I can jump. Because um, there's nothing worse than watching your show and jumping to the end of it and seeing the end of the show before you see the beginning of it. Um, auto expire is, you know, if I start running out of space, do I want this show to be one that automatically gets deleted or not? Uh, schedule recordings lets you come in and directly edit the schedule for this show um, inside of the program without having to go back through everything. And um, Okay, so Okay, sometimes, you know, if you want the Spanish channel, you can come click this, and now you've got your Spanish, and if you wanted the closed captioning, like was mentioned earlier, you say, give me the ATSC English closed caption. So once we get back to the program, we'll um, start getting, we'll have Spanish and closed captions in English. Or we should. Maybe the show doesn't have it. Anyway, um, I've rarely had problems with it, so I don't know what's going on now. Um, if you want to override your aspect ratio, you can do that right in the movie, um, so it automatically stretches. There, there's different types of stretch methods just on your standard TV. Um, let's see. Auto f or adjust fill, what's that do? Oh, that, that tweaks the, the stretch values. Um, the time stretch, well, actually, let me go into this. Um, you'll find sometimes in different programs, especially if you use an NTSC card, 
Uh, what happens with NTSC is you actually put the card in the computer, but you have to run a cable outside of your computer and back into your audio port in your computer. And sometimes those may get off synced. If you go into the audio sync, you can do your fine stretching. Um, Adjust time stretch. Anybody remember this from last year? This is a, a fun feature. This lets you speed up the playback of your recording, and it automatically adjusts the vault or the, the sound so they don't sound like chipmunks. So here we can watch this at two times the speed. If you could hear it, they just sound like they were their speed talkers in a, a court. But um, it's a really nice feature. I prefer. I auto. You can auto set the auto stretch um, for a global setting, and I always set it to 1.2. I usually watch most TV shows at about 1.2. Any documentaries, I watch between 1.3 and 1.4. Um, and you can also set up your sleep timers. So um, between, I'll, I'll tell you this real quick. An hour show um, is usually about 43 minutes of programming. Between skipping um, 43 once you take out commercials and then once you speed it up, I typically can watch an hour show in about a half hour. Um, so, you can watch a lot more TV in a lot less time. <laughs> so, out on the main menu, if you hit M out here, uh, you know, you can adjust your group filter, your group view. Um, you know, what type of shows, maybe I, I want to group it by category. And I want to show the recording groups and show the searches. You'll note, well, shoot. All right, let me do that again. Group view, show categories. Uh, why isn't that working? Okay, there's a bug. Um, normally, if you go into hit view by your groups, and you select categories, you can see the, the travel and variety over there. Um, oh, here we are. Save current view. There we go. So now I can sort by travel shows. And you can go in. Um, you can change group password if you have certain television shows that are being recorded. Um, you can block your kids out of being able to get into them. You can also set a master pin code that keeps anybody from getting into the settings. Um, and you can also add this recording to a playlist. Uh, where is... The help status icons, if you're wondering, you'll notice that there's different icons in the top left. A quick jump that tells you, you know, this is stereo, high def, it's been commercial recorded, or commercial detected. Um, that's new in the last feature. It was really needed. Uh, delete recordings is simple as you would think. Delete recordings. You um, say, you know, check it before you go, mark it as watch, your storage options. You can um, preserve it, change the playback groups, put it to a different location. Um, also edit all the jobs between hitting right. Right brings up this menu, M brings up your shorter menu. And you can always just hit D. Uh, if you go to re delete a show, you can set up, yes, uh, record it next time it comes on, or yes, delete it. Um, you know, I like to say yes, record it next time it comes on for, say, um, historical movies, because chances are maybe in another six months I'll have forgotten history and I'll want to watch something again. Uh, previously recorded lets you go, oh, go in and say you um, your wife said, don't delete any more, or, uh, okay, so you've got Live Free, Die Hard, the movie that you watch. Maybe you said, delete it and don't re-record it. Well, if you decide you want to record it next time it comes on, you can come back in here and, you know, go through and say, allow it to be re-recorded, you know, pretty simple stuff. System status, um, this will tell you, you know, Myth version, date started, finished for your program guide, how many days are still left, the next time it'll update it. Uh, your schedules, your rules, um, you can go in, check, see if your tuner's recording. You can check logs, um, which is helpful without dropping out. You just use the different number values. Uh, apparently, I don't have logs running on this one. But it'll, it'll show you, you know, if you've had a problem with the tuner card, if you've had buffer overruns. Uh, that's a really nice. You can see what jobs are currently being done. So this one, um, I tried last night to turn this into a default, and for some reason it aired. So I get an error status, which is nice. Um, 
machine status, you can see what's on it, your memory, how much disk space are you being used. It's really useful because you never have to drop back out to the console really to check anything. Um, and here's your auto expire list of what shows are going to be record or deleted in what order. Um, yes? As far as disk space goes, how much does a typical show take and how much would you recommend? Um, NTSC is, um, most settings are about 500 megs an hour. If you go to the really high settings on NTSC, like you're recording 800 by 600, which is oversampling, um, it's about, um, you know, 800. Uh, I, for all my NTSC, I save it in DivX and PEG4, so it's really highly compressed and it, it doesn't take much. HD is a whole different boat. It's MPEG2. Um, all HD over the air is actually sent in an MPEG2 transport stream. So you really don't want to transcode it to anything smaller because you're going to lose quality. Anytime you go from a lossless codec to another lossless, um, you're going to lose it. HD will be anywhere from about five gigs an hour for say like a 480p um, to nine, nine and a half gigs an hour for a 1080i signal. So it, it does start to add up. Yes? Is there a set of quotas for different users? To um, no, unfortunately not right now. Um, the best way to handle that is um, set up the predefined shows and make sure certain people can only record um, 10 of certain shows. So that kind of gives them an, an artificial quota just by limiting the number of shows that um, you're recording for each different person. Okay, uh, so music. Uh, you've got your standard eject, you've got scan for music, which anytime you change your music folder, you actually have to run this. Um, it goes through updates and music tree. Import files, say you had um, files in. Uh, oh yeah, the nice thing is you've got an online keyboard if you don't want to type thing in. If you have just a remote, um, you can say slash home, but I don't want to do that, so I'll just go like this really quickly. Oh, search. So it found 15 tracks. So I can say play, or it can come to track two. Um, so you can see I've got some James Taylor in my home. So home directory. And I can just say, you know, add all new. So it just goes out, adds the new 15 tracks, updates the database. If you wanted to import a CD, I forgot to bring one. Um, this goes out to the, the CDDB lookups, pulls all the information. Um, you can also set, if you hit, oh, whoops. Oh, rip quality. All right. Oh, shoot. Um, the quality, I'll, I won't go back into this, but low is just, you know, MP3, like a 128 kilobit. You'll have medium, which is like 256 MPEG3. Um, you'll, uh, there's lossless, which auto encodes as FLAC. You can set up if you want AUG. You can set up, you know, different standards, low, medium, high, to specific bit rates, to AUG Vorbis, to MP3, to WAVE. All of that is customizable. Uh, select music, you know, you can say, show me my entire tree. Uh, maybe you just want to play the CD. You can show the active playlist um, that you're, is currently loaded, and you can also manage um, your playlist. So if you come up here and hit, uh, where, why isn't it working? Oh, um, you come down, hit enter, you can say, new playlist. Um, you have all your different things. It, you can, if you have certain songs that are already loaded, you can say, hey, just burn these to an MP or a, a CD for me. Um, you can create both MP3, like dump all the songs to, an MP, or to a CD as MP3s, or you can actually burn the audio track. Um, and then, of course, you've got play music. So, um, this is a good example of running 640 by 480. You'll notice everything's overlapped and you can't see stuff very well. Um, Myth has a really nice smart shuffle, which actually lets you rate in all the different songs. If I were to hit nine, you can't see anything. Um, but it actually has different star values. So if you like a song, hit nine. It increases the rating. If you don't like it, hit seven. Um, then if you go into... Um, I'll, I'll show you something else real quick, too. Um, and then I'll explain the smart shuffle as I show the settings. The searching in here is really powerful. Say if I want all my acoustic stuff. I say acoustic. Okay. 
replace. So here's all my acoustic music. Um, if you want, you know, load tracks from CD, you can save from CD. Uh, yep, searches through tags. When you when it scans the music, it pulls all the ID3s. If it doesn't have an ID3, it'll try and look at the the way it's stored under the file system and try and guess the different things. You can also set up um, if you have a specific format and you've organized, you can tell it. You know, um, the first thing is going to be the artist. The next thing is going to be the album. The next thing is going to be um, genre. You can set all of that up. Uh, do album art? Yep, does album art. Um, so if I bring up all the Dave Matthews and I can go to one that I know has album art. Oh, whoops, that's going to be, let's do all tracks. Um, why isn't it working? Myth has some really bad, oh, so I changed songs. I don't know why the visualization, oh, it's not set up. Um, you can set up the visualization to always show your track art or album art. I'll embarrass myself and scroll through a bunch of my stuff. Um, so, yep. You can also come in here if you hit E. Oh, sorry, I. Uh, you can edit all of your metadata. And when you hit save, it'll actually go out and save your ID3 tags. Um, you'll also notice in that it had play count. Um, that comes up when you, you do your smart play. So, no, stop playing. Um, if I show you the setup for music, general settings. Okay, so you can in here specify the location of you know where your music stored. Uh, by default, everything in the last version of Myth, well, I shouldn't say everything, and in the Ubuntu version, it stores everything under Virelight Myth TV. Uh, you can set your auto or your auto device, audio device if you have a specific one. You can set your CD-ROM. Automatically look up CDs if you inject or put one into the tray. Um, keyboard accelerator buttons just leave alone. Um, I don't even want to explain that. So your sorting tree. This lets you um, back in your music player. I didn't show you, but you can actually kind of navigate back and forth. This lets you define what or how that menu system structured. Um, if you notice, I actually had it said 0 to 9, A, B, C was one group, then D, E, F was another column, and F, G, H. Um, that's called split artist. There's different split artists depending if you have a huge collection, you're not going to want A, B, or it's, you'll find different ways of sorting stuff. That's all personal stuff. Um, this is a few average, many that would be A, B, C, D, E, F, G would be average, uh, few would be A, B, C. Uh, you can tell it to ignore uh, your tracks. The file name format is what I was saying, where you've got your own format, and your um, how to re-encode your tags if you save stuff. Information on DV Writer, uh, usually leave that blank. Player setups, uh, play mode, I always have mine start in Intelligent. Uh, resume, lets you resume by the track, lets you resume by the exact location or off. Um, I usually do track. Uh, search results, lets you limit how many search results you come back. Oh, show song rating. That was turned off. Show entire music tree. Uh, one nice thing, if you're going to do parties, you can show your list as shuffled. That way, if maybe you don't think the next song is going to be the best one, you can see it before um, it plays. So next, um, rating weight. OK, so this is the, the intelligent playback. Um, you can set these over to 100 if you want. Um, it, they're all relative to each other. Uh, I personally prefer something, you know, around 60 on this for giving it the weight. How many times? I really don't care how many times it's played, so I may set it at five. Uh, the last play, you know, if I haven't heard it for a while, go ahead and try to play it again. Random, you know, I, I just set it around 10. Uh, here's where you control the visualizations. You can actually show your album art. Say I want album art. I want Synthanasia and Bump Scope. So I just hit OK. Um, change song or visualization on each song. You know, show album art at the beginning of each. I prefer that. Um, random visualization order. If you have a really slow computer, you may want to turn these uh, video scalings up. Well, you only get one or two. Um, so that would just, you know, reduce the amount of uh, processing power that's required to do the visualization. Ripping settings, pretty easy. Um, 
auto default is full, or paranoia, just leave that as full. How you want it to be stored, do you want to replace spaces with underscores, absolutely. If you have a script you want to run after everything's inserted, or inserted you have that option here. And then automatically eject CDs once they're done. Uh, your encoding, do you want aug vorbis, lame, um, those are your only two options, and low, medium, high, and perfect. Perfect will be the FLAC, anything less. Um, you'll, I can't remember what those are off the top of my head. Or and use variable bit rates, which I recommend. Um, so that's music, videos. Uh, browse, uh, let's see, what am I going to do first? OK, so you have your eject, you have your rip. If you put a DVD in, um, you always get this lovely message saying something's wrong. And if I were to hit a number, Throw Close the tray. Oh, jeez. This moment was brought to you by an accident. And Myth TV locking up. There we are. All right. So, says no jobs checking, waiting for the DVD. So, up pops um, the disk information as soon as it reads it from the disk. Come on. There we go. All right, so I have in here Shrek. Uh, if you push left and right at this location, I don't have control. There we go. All right. So it by default picked the longest uh, longest length track on the DVD, which hopefully is the main. If you have you know the widescreen or full screen version, you may just want to hit enter. Oh, not enter. Um, I believe P. Is it P? Oh wait, no. You come down to view, and it will let you preview that specific track, just so you can you know skip forward, make sure that it's widescreen. Hit escape to go back. Uh, if you want to say record additional tracks like the previews, you can always say, hey, also record this. I want all the previews. Um, you can name it. If you have a uh, ISO actually will rip the whole DVD as is menus. Um, I highly recommend this. Otherwise, you're not going to get the extra the bonus material. Um, the difference is a main track is usually about four, to, uh, four or five gigs. The whole DVD is going to be you know, eight, nine gigs. Um, with storage space, as cheap it is, I recommend just doing ISO. If you do ISO, the audio language tracks get ignored, the AC3 gets ignored. If you're going to do um, a rip of just the main track, you may want to set these. Say you want to take it on the road with you and listen to it um, on your laptop. You may just want you know, um, the two-channel audio, and I don't care about the AC3. And for the rip quality, um, perfect will just rip the, the video track perfect. You can also do excellent. Uh, good and oh, is that all they have now? Um, no, um, unfortunately, it doesn't. Uh, you just get the those settings there unless you modify the source, uh, which you can do. Um, but you know, excellent actually does a two-pass DivX. Um, good just does you know a, a quick rip, um, single pass, low quality. Um, if you hit begin ripping, it just goes away and disappears into the background until it's done. Um, Question? Yes? Can I uh, do this from the front end, or do I have to do it on the back end? Nope, you can do this on any system. The only thing you have to run specifically to the back end is the Myth TV setup. You have to run Myth TV setup on every system that you have a tuner card in. Um, if you have video CD, you can do that. Uh, regular DVD, you can play that. Video manager. You'll notice in here I have a lot of, um, do I have a time left? How long do I have? Oh. But one thing I was going to announce, we have the large room upstairs with other projectors that seem to work better that you have access to for the next hour. If you want to continue, repeat, whichever way you want to handle it. OK. Um, I'll vote for continuing. Anybody? A couple. All right, those that are interested will go upstairs. I'll also be doing a. Um, uh, I think they wanted it sitting out somewhere, too, for people to look at. So I'll be around. Thanks.